Welcome onto the stage, the guest fighters today. We've got Uriah Hall, we've got Leon Edwards, we've got Jack Hermanson, and we've got Volkan Özdemir. Make some noise. All right, we have two microphones. We have one microphone there and one over there. If you would like a question, please queue up behind the microphones. Otherwise, let's get rolling. How are you doing? All good? Yes. Well, you wanted to beatbox. You wanted to do some singing for Are you good now we're out front? I was just backstage. Oh, OK. <laughs> Jack, what's it like? You're a superstar now. Oh, man, it's great to be here. So, a little disappointed. Happy that you're on the Q&A with us, but disappointed that you're not fighting. Talk to me about that. Frustrating. Yeah, so, I wasn't supposed to be here, but, you know, with the circumstance, you know, I'm here. So, it's better for me to be here, you know. It's going to be produ productive for me. But, you know, right now, um, the fight gets cancelled and um, things happen, you know. Things happen. It's, uh, it's too bad, but I just wish a quick re recovery for Ilya. Cool. All right. No questions yet. Come on. I know we've got someone that's got a question. Here we go. Jack, if you fight Kelvin Gastelum, in what round will you fin finish him? Of course, the first round. <laughs> yeah, you know how to do it. Ground the pound or the guillotine, for sure. Next question. You're thinking about it. Hello. Hey, Jack, can I ask you in Norwegian? One more time. Can I ask a question in Norwegian? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Alla på jobb älskar det. Vi snackar om det hela tiden. Vem är vad är nästa kamp? Har du en har du en kamp som kommer? Um, jag tror att det kommer. Jag tror det kommer bli till hösten. Det ryktas som ett stävne i Köpenhamn, så uh, vi får se. Uh, det, det kanske blir Köpenhamn. Du, du, trän, du tränar i Oslo. En till. Det är Oslo du tränar. I Oslo jag tränar. Ja, jag mm. tränar i Kristiansand. Ja. Uh, and for you, Ed Har uh, Hardy, yeah. uh, you, are you planning on coming back? And if so, what would it be for a title run or do you feel you're past your prime? De definitely not a title run. I just want a fight. Yeah. yeah. You know, hanging around these guys that are in shape and, you know, strong, it gets me fired up, it gets me motivated to train. So uh, I always come to a fight week thinking about fighting again, right? You all, all you guys want to fight this weekend, right? Of course you do, it's the UFC. Everybody loves a fight. But well, you're still training every every time you I still see training. You, I see yeah. you in the, in the gym all the time. Not quite as hard as you guys. <laughs> so talk to me about where you're at. You're in Vegas right now, yeah. You're based in Vegas right now. Yeah. Um, so I'm in Vegas. There's more to do in Vegas, by the way. It's not just party. There's like a whole nother section. Um, but I moved from New York City to Vegas. The Performance Institute is out there. It's a little easier. Plus Dana convinced me because I lived in California. I didn't realize I was paying for California, but he told me to move to Vegas instead. I've been training out there for a few years now. Um, I like it. Um, it's a little easy. I'm, right now I'm recovering. You know, I had surgery after the last performance. Hopefully by the end of the year I can get back in there. Nice. Uh, and the PI, the Performance Institute, are you making the most of that place? One more time. The PI. What about it? Are you making the most of it? Yeah, I mean, it's free food. Uh, what else? Um, <laughs> it's good food, right? It's good food, and it's Luke free. Luke Rockhold's there all the time. Free all the time. I'm, I'm 10 minutes from there. It's free. It's easy. The coach is really good. Bo Sandoval's like the head of um, the performance staff. He's doing a great job. There's an awesome sauna, uh, spa area. It's free. And, you know, black folks, we love free stuff. So. <laughs> Who else has been to the PI? Have you guys visited the PI yet? I've been there a few times, yeah. Yeah? It's, it's great, you know. Did, did uh, you try the punch machine? I could not. I couldn't, actually. Yeah? I had some uh, injury in my hands, so uh, I okay. wait a little bit, but yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's nice to go there. Yeah. I need to beat uh, Francis' record, though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody's beating Francis' record. No. <laughs> um, Leo, you've been to the PI? I've been there um, once. So it was good, good for recovery. Uh, after my fight, I had a bad injury, so I went there and yeah, recovered nicely and parted, so it was good. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what, what are you planning on at the moment? Um, you keep my, calling people out. You want a fight. Who do you want? Who do you want to um, fight? Well, my, um, Let's my, make a fight. Let's make a fight today. RDA? I want to see that. RDA? Uh, <laughs> Everybody wants the same. Huh? Masada, I'll, I'll kill Masada, so that, that's my plan next thing. 
Who are you going to give me next? I'm ready to go. So top five for me. And I'm on a seven fight win streak now. One more than the world title shot. So that's my plans. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I've got a question. <laughs> What's up, guys? What's well, up? Welcome to Stockholm. Jack, you're going to be a champ. Thank you, man. I saw, I saw you in Cage Warriors. You're going to be a champ, man. Thank you so Amazing much. Amazing against the last guy. I don't forget his name now. <laughs> Leon. How's life after a three-piece and a combo? <laughs> What's up? Life is good, brother. Life it's is good. good. It didn't phase you. You were ready. Oh, come on. Hit me the best shots. It didn't uh, move me, so it's all good. Uriah, you wrote happy birthday to me a couple of years ago. My girlfriend wrote you on Facebook. Oh, that was you? That was me, man. What's up? <laughs> What's happy up? birthday. <laughs> hey, I want to see that spinning kick again, man. Come on. Let's get the fire back. I know, man. These guys are all watching my tapes. They're like... He's getting old, we're gonna see that kick. I gotta work on some other Street Fighter kicks and stuff like that. It's coming. that. it's coming. No time, what's up, man? How you feeling? Good, thank you. Thank you, thank you. You think he pulled out because he's scared of you or he's your friend or what? He's, uh, I'm not gonna go into details, but you know, it's, uh, it's what's happening, you know, it's a uh, weight cut time, you know, everything is getting a little bit, you know, difficult. So yeah, he pulled his back and um, now he wasn't able to fight. So, you know, here I am, I'm ready to fight, so. I just, I was just hoping something will happen, you know, last minute change, but it wasn't the case. So I'm, I'm ready to, for, for the next one. All right, thank you guys. Great to see you, Major thank you. fan. Thank you. Next question, please. How you doing, how you doing fellas? Uh, Volkan, could you just explain to us how you found out that the fight was canceled? So I was actually uh, getting ready for, for the weight cut. Uh, I still had like six kilos to lose, so I was, I was at, the, at, the, at the night in my room. I just did some bike and I was getting ready to go to, into the sauna. And I was in the bathroom getting ready. I came out of my room, all my coaches were in the bed. So that was kind of weird. They were waiting on me and they say, Vulcan, and I say, I know it. <laughs> Something bad happened. And they told me, yeah, he, he, he pulled his back. You know, he, the, fight is, uh, the fight is canceled. So, yeah, what can you do? First thing I say, I say, okay, let me give me these uh, snacks. There was snacks on the bed, right? So I say, yeah, I'm going to get the snacks, you know. But then they say, okay, wait, 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 wait. You cannot eat right now. We have to figure out some details, you know, and stuff like that. So I had to wait. I still had to make the cut for nothing. But, you know, staying professional, I did my cut six kilo one night. And now it's good. Now I can enjoy the show as a spectator. <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, Jack, just a question for you. We're in Globen. This is the, one of the most iconic Swedish sports venues. Uh, what are your best memories from this building? And when are you going to fight here? Man, you know, I fought here. I don't remember which year, but I fought Alex Nicholson here. And I managed to uh, defeat him in the first round. And that was the most amazing feeling I ever felt in an MMA fight. You know, have every single one in this arena on my side cheering for me you know it's a memory uh, for life and uh, you know i can't wait to get get back here you know maybe the next year and uh, and feel on it again and just one final question uh, you were speaking in swedish there and you mentioned that you might be fighting in another scandinavian city could you just explain to the viewers in english what you were saying there uh, yeah you know um, there is rumors about a uh, um, uh, event in uh, Copenhagen uh, in late September uh, and I think that would be a great time for me to fight again and is also in a great spot so both the Norwegian and the Swedish fans uh, can come and uh, watch me do my thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Firstly for Dan, um, we bumped into each other after the Till Wonderball fight in the streets of Liverpool. I just want to say you're the nicest man in MMA, I think. You took the time out to talk to us and we really appreciate it, so thank you, thank you for that. No question, just praise. Uh, Leon, come over from the UK today, repping, the, repping England, repping UK, thanks Good. very much. Good man. How do you think the English boys get on tomorrow? Um, I, I'm going for Jimmy, obviously, yeah. he's one of my good friends and I, I feel he'll, he'll get the finish, so that's what we're rooting for. And what next for you then? I've, I've seen reports of RDA in, in Abu Dhabi potentially. Is that something you're interested that, that's, in? That, that's the plan. Um, he's ranked number four. He's coming off two losses. Now i got one win. So I feel that's, that's the fight to make next to put me towards a title, title fight. Is that an exclusive for us? Not yet, but <laughs> <laughs> hopefully. Thanks very much. Volcan. 
there's a there's a vacant co-main event. How'd you fancy it? Me and you, light heavyweight. <laughs> <laughs> go, go for it, shall we? What did you say, sorry? He's calling you out. He wants to fight you oh. tomorrow. <laughs> Come, Bert, he made weight this morning. He's ready. Muscle, I, I, I haven't, but give me a couple of hours. I'll, <laughs> maybe let's make it heavyweight, and then we'll fight. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you, my friend. Thank you. Hi, guys. How are you? Everything all right? I have a question for all of you. If Dana White would just walk out right now and give you the opportunity to call out someone, who would you call out? If Dana White walked in right now and you could call out anybody, who would you call out? Your mo no. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Joking, terrible joke. Uh, no, no, I think she would love that. Um, <laughs> How much money do you have? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, wow, that was a quick question. Uh, I didn't think about, maybe if I, you get to me last, I'll, I'll answer that, I'll, I'll have Jack start. All right. Well, Jack, we know who you want to fight. You've already asked for Kelvin Gastelum, right? Yeah. Uh, I think, the, you know, the only opponent that's ranked higher than me that's available right now is Kelvin Gastelum, so that's who I want to fight. Uh, right. So, Kelvin Gastelum, main event, Copenhagen, September, that would be something. Masvidal. Uh, <laughs> um, for me, it would be top five, so it would be either Tyron Woodley or RDA, so that's my top pick, choice. Pick one, pick one. Uh, yeah. Tyron Woodley, the former champion, just got beat, so I'll go Woodley. Right. Nice. Yeah. Right. nice. Yeah, for me, it's uh, the one I really want to, to avenge the most is definitely my last fight, you know, you know Dominic Reyes. This win is, uh, I think uh, his win is a, is a stain on my record, so I want, I want to make it right. Thank you, guys. One, Pressure's one on. Guy to answer, yeah. uh, I thought about it. Um, <laughs> You're lying. I think I would go with Israel, but for like stylistically, you know, with the fight game is different. I know a lot of you guys don't understand this. It's, it's business, man. It's like, you can't just go out there and pick fights anymore. Sometimes you have to be very strategic. It's like, if I take this, this, and this, I'm a little bit old school. I'm like, all right, he wants to fight, let's do it. If, but, if he would have... Tactically, you have to make the right decisions, but for me, I would fight Israel. I, I like his style. I think a guy like that would bring the best out of me. I'm, I'm all about improving. If I see someone with some great skill set, I'm like, let's do it. But again, you know, it's like, what makes sense? Guys, thanks very much. Thank you. Good question. <laughs> Jack, uh, how, how, just who, do you, who do you want to fight most? Idris, uh, uh, Israel Adesanya or uh, Robert Whittaker? Uh, well, I think that uh, Robert Whittaker is the current champ. He's the man. He's the guy that I want to fight. Exactly. And a question for everyone. Well, the toughest fight that you won that sticks in your memory, which one is that? The toughest fight that you won that sticks in your memory? I can start there. Go for it. You know, I, I fought uh, Talis Ladis in Brazil, and I dislocated my rib in the first round, and I managed to turn that fight around there and win the fight. That's the one. Um, mine would probably be Albert Tuminov. Um, <laughs> it would be Albert Tuminov because I had a bad back injury leading up to that fight, and so it was harder than I should have made it, so yeah, probably that one because yeah. injuries. Yeah, my fight, if you have to go to the same road, uh, DC, you know, it's uh, really the fight I, I, want, I want to, to, to make it right again, you know, also. So that will be a fight I, I, w I will want to get again. Mm. Uh, I think for me it was Thiago Santos. A week before the fight, I sprained my ankle on my left foot, and then I broke my toe on my right foot <laughs> in the fight, so I had no legs. And I just remember it being one of the craziest moments where I had to decide, do I really want this? And the pain was there. Every round, the bone kept coming out. By the end of the fight, my bone was all the way out. The, they wanted to stop the fight. It was one of those adversity moments where, till this day, still sticks in my head. So I'm proud of myself for going through that. Uh, and, and you? And you? The toughest fight that I, uh, let me think. Probably Marcus Davis, I would say. I mean, it was just, the whole fight was, was tough. Every position was difficult because he was so strong and he hated me so much. <laughs> he made everything difficult. That was probably the, the toughest one that I won. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dan, my first question is for you. 
Mickey Gall's been calling you out for a long time. You're looking for just one fight. That guy's a big mouth. Why don't you go for him? Didn't Diego Sanchez just embarrass Mickey Gall? He did. Yeah, but he I, did. No, he, he, just, time, he just right? embarrassed him. That's, he's a child. I'm, I, I don't want to fight children. Like, if I'm going to fight again, I want to fight a veteran. I want to fight someone that's earned their stripes in the UFC, that's had 30 or 40 fights. I don't want to fight a kid. GSP rematch? I'd fight GSP again just to get wrestled again for 25 minutes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, I've got one more question for Falcon, repping Switzerland. Uh, Falcon, you obviously beat Dominic Reyes. I think everyone in this arena agrees that you beat Dominic Reyes. So instead of trying to get a rematch, why don't you go on another title run? Like, who do you want to get next? How do you get to your, back to your title? Yeah, this is the fight I, I want to avenge the most, you know. This fight was mine, you know, I felt it during the fight, you know, his, his will broke during the fight. But I know also, I knew also I broke his nose, so he, he will be away for, for a little bit. So I wanted to fight uh, ASAP after my, my, my last uh, performance. I wasn't happy with it, so Stockholm was, uh, was a choice for me. Unfortunately, something happened again. So, yeah, I want to fight, uh, who, who do I want to fight next? Somebody uh, whose back is not injured, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Thiago Santos, I think that'll be a knockout fight. For that, both that, will be, that will be a good fight. You know, first now he's, uh, he's booked with uh, John John, so we'll see what's, uh, what about his fight. I want uh, Reyes uh, in, my, uh, in the mix for sure. You know, like uh, soon, uh, sooner or later, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get him back. And then, uh, you know, the, one of the winners of uh, Saturday, man, there, there is uh, some great fights coming up. Do you think Santos has a shot against John Jones? He's wild, you know, I, I like his style, you know, I think the, one of the key also to, to beat Jones is, uh, is not to let him um, put his rhythm, you know, that's uh, something like, uh, Thiago Santos looks like he doesn't care, you know, he doesn't give a fuck, so he just goes and, and, and throw fucking hammers, you know, so that's going to be, uh, that's gonna be one of the components, you know, you have to see, you know, you look at what's happening during the fight and then you make your own game plan. Cool, man, thanks. Thank you. All right. Um, I have a question for like Don Hurry. So, how do you feel like bringing EOC back to Stockholm for the third time? A, a question to me? Yes. I, I think it's great to be here. You know, every time I come to Sweden, I'm reminded that the fans are dedicated, experienced fans. I travel all around the world, and most of the time, I'm experiencing fans that they know some parts of the sport and aren't sure of others. But whenever I come to Scandinavia, they, they, the, you, you guys know about MMA and you follow the sport and I really appreciate that. It's always good to be in Sweden. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I have uh, some questions for uh, Jack. Um, how do you feel like fighting in the Swedish ground? Uh, to, to fight in Sweden is, uh, you know, is amazing. Uh, I only done it once uh, out of my 25 professional fights, uh, you know, and uh, that was the most amazing feeling in my career. So uh, I would love to do it again, you know. And I can feel now when I'm here in the globe, you know, oh man, I want to fight. But I have to wait a little bit, and hopefully I will get uh, on the next one that's here. Yes. All right, that was all the questions. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Hi. Yeah, I got a question for you, Dan. It's uh, how do you think you're going to match up against Tony Ferguson? How, how do I think you're going to match up against Tony Ferguson? How do I think I match up against Tony yeah. Ferguson? I'm, I'm fighting Tony Ferguson. Yeah, if you ever fight him. <laughs> when did this news break? I've not been told. <laughs> no, no, no. It's just me. Just. My Just manager. generally, you know, Tony Ferguson's a, a really interesting character because he doesn't, he, he doesn't even know exactly what he's doing when he's fighting. You know, he, he's a flow state fighter. If, if he thinks of something, he's doing it before he's even finished the thought. And that makes him very dangerous. You know, if you grab someone's leg and they're forward rolling out of takedowns and throwing spinning elbows and stuff, especially when you've got someone like Tony Ferguson that's all elbows and knees. I used to spar with a guy like that and every time you hit them, it hurts. You know, and Tony Ferguson's that kind of guy, you know, he's like slice you up with an elbow, hit you with a knee and you just wouldn't expect it. I think he's dangerous in any, for anybody in that division. I could also see him moving up to 170 as well and being a problem there. Thank you. Yeah, you got more questions? Yeah. Go for, for it. Uh, for uh, Edward, uh, do you think 
Do you think you're going to be friends with Jorge Masvidal after the three piece of soda? <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> I think that's a no. <laughs> yeah, thank you, guys. Next question, please, sir. Yeah, I got a question. I got a question for Jack. Um, obviously, you're training out of Oslo, Norway. So, you think we're going to see any more Norwegians in the UFC next year or in the coming years? And if if you do, then who? Uh, we're gonna see. I think we're gonna see two more this year. Actually, uh, I have two training partners of mine. One is Kenneth Berg. He is uh, fighting in Dana White Contender Series in July. And then you have Martin Hamlet Nielsen. He's fighting for the Cage Warriors Light Heavyweight uh, Title uh, in June. So I expect both those guys do good, win their fights, and then uh, continue over to the UFC. So uh, we have some refill in the light heavyweight division. Yeah, and for Uriah, how would you think about fighting Jack? Awkward. <laughs> uh, I think he's awesome, man. I actually trained with one of his buddy, um, Kenneth. Kenneth, who's a big dude with all tattoos. Looked like he just came out of jail, but really nice guy. Like, <laughs> so nice. And uh, I watched some of this guy's videos, and you know, people are like, yo, his jujitsu is really nice. And I watched him, like, yo, this guy would be dangerous stylistically. You know, it's a classic grappler maybe versus striker. I, I did watch his striking. It's improved. He looked great. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's the fight game. All bets are off when that door closes. You know, we've seen a lot of fights where people are doing great and all of a sudden some stuff happens. So it's just taking that risk, jumping in there and having fun with it and seeing what happens. Obviously, it's going to happen one of these days, but I have nothing bad to say about him. He's a great individual. Um, nice guy, I hung out with him yesterday. Can't play soccer though, but you know, he's a cool guy. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Next question, please. It's for Edward. I just want to know what actually happened and what was said between you and Masvidal backstage to cause whatever happened. Um, yeah, I want to know too. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Basically, Uber, I was saying leading up to the fight, Uber won the, won the main event. That's with my fight in July. So after the fight, we both were fight, both were doing media. I was walking past, I was like, ah, oh, in July, we fight. Then like, he walked over like this. Is that one? <laughs> I walked over, then he threw a few shots, got behind security. That was it. That, that was the whole situation. So in other words, he hit you first and then turned into a shite bag? Uh -huh. What'd you say? <laughs> accent, so, accent. in other words, he hit you first, and then he was a shite bag, so he ran away. He's a shit bag? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Thank you. Next question, please. Uh, hi, I got a question for Jack. My question is, if you were to beat Kevin Gastelum, and then get a shot at Whitaker, would you try to go move up and wait and try to beat John Jones to become champ champ? Uh, you know, if, if I defended my title a couple of times and felt like, okay, I've accomplished what I can do in this division, uh, then I would think about it. But let's be honest, man, I'm one of the guys that cut the least, you know, I, I don't cut any weight in my division, so I'm really, really small and he's like a huge guy, so uh, he would have uh, like uh, 20 kilos on me on fight day. <laughs> so, but you never know, man. Uh, if I feel like uh, I've done enough in this division, I would, you know, try to go up and, and down, you know, to, to beat those guys there as well. Uh, so I'm up for the challenge. Thank you. <laughs> up and down to welterweight. Yeah, you, you know, know you, I can you cut. You stay at middleweight. You stay at middleweight. You're too big for welterweight. <laughs> Next question, please. Uh, a question for Edwards. As uh, Masvidal approached you with his hands behind his back, what do you actually think was about to occur? I don't know. As he <laughs> claimed, you put up your hands. Did you anticipate a fight or what happened? I put up my hands? Yeah, he claimed so at least. I, I didn't put up my hands. Okay. All right. the, the thing is, when those kind of things happen backstage, it happens so very rarely. Like, if I was still fighting and someone walked up to me like that, I wouldn't expect them to punch me, not for free. I'd expect them to wait until they were getting paid for it. 
So when two fighters come together backstage and all the cameras are on, the last thing a fighter's going to expect is that they're going to get punched. Yeah, exactly. You know, it, it's, it's, it's a mentality thing. I mean, and the, the guy is doing like uh, backyard fights, you know, so he's coming from a different <laughs> background, you know, so it's, it's different. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Masvidal's a street fighter. It's a different mentality. I but mean, like, it, we're, we're professionals. That kind of thing doesn't happen hardly ever. So when it does, it, it takes us by surprise. Yeah, but as he uh, said himself, he came with his hands behind his back, signalizing he was not hostile. Still, he claims you uh, Masvidal, aggravated. Masvidal knows all the tricks, my friend. He knows how to be a street fighter. That's how to be a street fighter. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> if I could say something, because I'm American, when a guy <laughs> walks up to you like this, talking shit, it means something's going to happen. <laughs> That's what that means. If I'm walking up to you like, hey, man, I don't like the way your beard looks, I'm going to hit him. <laughs> that, so that signifies a fight, just to let you know. <laughs> Thank you. Next question. Sure. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, awesome for you to come here and be with us. Uh, I got a question for Aliyal. Uh, what made you start uh, martial arts? Like, what got Ooh, you into it? Great. Just... I'll go last. That was to, to, to Leon, yeah, that to, was? Uh, to everybody. Oh, to everybody. Sorry. So, yeah, yeah, Jack, sorry. start with oh, you. Jack. What made you start martial arts? It's for everybody. So start thinking now. <laughs> You know, I've been a big fan of martial arts since I was a kid, uh, as long as I can remember, you know, watching Bruce Lee movies, and, uh, you know, he was the man, he was my hero, and I wanted to start with Kung Fu, but my mom wouldn't let me, so she said, you know, you can do wrestling, no punches, you know, started, started with wrestling, wrestled for 10 years, and then I found MMA, so, yeah, that was the, my road. Nice. Leon? Um, for me, um, I got put into martial arts for my mom, brought me to the, to the gym because I kept getting in trouble, so there's another way just to basically put my energy in. I fell in love with it, now my, my brother does it, my friends does it, so that's how I got involved. Yeah, for me it was uh, Jackie Chan as well, you know, like uh, watching the movie uh, Drunken Master, so yeah. I had two choices, <laughs> getting drunk or starting karate, so I went with karate. <laughs> We're going to see some drunken fight master in your I'll next get fight. Drunk still, you know, getting into fights, but you know, <laughs> let's forget about it. What about you, Uriah? Um, just like all these guys, you know, all the legends, Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan, Jet Li, and all those guys, you know, they're all my idols, but uh, I think for me when I was young, coming to the States as an immigrant, uh, I was bullied, and I was bullied to a point where I contemplated suicide in several attempts. There was even a point in my life where I wanted to shoot up a school because I was bullied so bad. Luckily, martial arts saved me, but what really intrigued me was a video game called Tekken, which I will school anybody in here. Uh, I played the game, and I remember moving my furnitures. I put the VHS, if you guys know what that is. I put it in, I recorded it, I played, and when the bullying got out of hand, my mom finally put me in martial arts, and I excelled, so I can actually thank Tekken and my mom. Awesome. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, one more quick question, if it's okay. Yeah, um, what, do, what do you guys think about uh, the weight cuts? As you said, Jack, you're a smaller guy. Open more uh, weight classes. <laughs> yeah, that. And uh, what do you guys think about the system one uh, has in Asia, where they don't basically cut any weight and they check their hydration levels? What do you guys I, think I, I think that? checking hydration levels is a really good idea. I, I think people will always w uh, cut weight, especially if there's an opportunity to with, with several hours to rehydrate. I think more weight classes is the answer. I think we need a weight class between lightweight and welterweight, another one between welterweight and uh, middleweight to start with. Um, yeah. And then it's all about education. You know, you look at the guys that are fighting now that are not cutting too much weight. I mean, these are good examples. We've got Anthony Smith on the card tomorrow who doesn't cut hardly any weight. He literally walked onto the scales this morning rubbing sleep out of his eyes because he'd not been in the sauna. And these guys perform, and that's what we need to see, people that are not cutting weight and performing at their best. So I think the proof's in the pudding, as it were. You, know, you just need to see it happen in, in front of you. Thank you. Thank We've you only guys. got time for a couple more questions, so let's get through these and then nobody else join the lines, please. What's your so, question? So, a question to all of you. Uh, what's your favorite combination during the fight? Sorry, say that again? What's your favorite combination in the fight? Favorite combination. I'll tell you mine straight away. Ernesto Hoost, jab, cross, left hook, low kick. Ernesto Hoost, my Dutch favorite. Style, huh? huh? Dutch style. Dutch style, exactly, exactly. Favorite combination? I know, right? Uh, it would be L1, L1, left, right, up, R2. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm very technical, so for me, anything that involves any type of spin, I'm the type of guy, I look for openings. If I look at someone and I say, okay, where's his weakness? 
how do I exploit that? If I see you drop your left hand a little bit, I'll do something to signify that knockout. If I see you have a soft stomach, I'm gonna knock you out. If I see you have skinny legs, I'm gonna break your legs. So it's all about finding something I can pinpoint. But yeah, L1, L1, R2, up, down. That's <laughs> yeah, for me, it's a jab, jab, cross. You know, jab, jab, cross works all the time. You know, it's, a, it's, a, it's the beginning of every combination. So this is my, my thing. Nice. Um, I think for me is, I come southpaw from a um, left, left hand, left head kick at the same time. Could they lean back off the left hand, but the left head kick catch them, sir? Don't say too much. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let me guess. <laughs> bang, <laughs> bang, <laughs> bang. That's a good one, you know. <laughs> I, uh, in the stand up, I like to slip on the outside, come with the right uppercut, okay. left hook, and a straight cross. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Two quick questions. Let's get through these. What's your question, my friend? Yeah, I have a question for Jack Hammond, son. Uh, I'm just wondering, how come uh, you represent Norway as well as Sweden? Did you move there as a kid, or how uh, did it come about? Uh, I grew up in Sweden and lived here for 20 years. And then uh, the last 10 years of my life, I've been living in Norway. So basically, my MMA career uh, has been out of Norway, you know, and uh, the rest of my life in Sweden. So I feel a strong connection to both countries. And, uh, you know, I represent them both. Okay. With pride. Thank you. Sorry, no more questions. Last questions over here. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, can I get two questions then? As long as they're quick, my friend. Okay. We've got hungry thank and thirsty uh, fighters backstage. Raya, obviously, Ilya unfortunately have to withdraw because of injury. Uh, what would it take for you to stand in and take the fight to a couple of more days, or would you even consider moving up and taking a fight against Vulcan? What's, that's for me? Yeah. What did you say? Say it again. Yeah, uh, obviously. He wants Ilir. you to fight me. Yeah. I like him, man. He's a good-looking dude. Um, <laughs> but would you fight in light heavyweight against Volkan if you got the offer a week ago? Uh, to be really, really, really honest, in this game, it's all about business. You know, yeah. I, Kelvin is one of my best friends. I might have to fight him. You know, the best fights are personal. Like yeah. He wants to fight Kelvin for whatever reason. I want to fight Israel. It's personal. There's, there's a reason behind it to either get to the next level or I think I could beat this guy. But yeah, if Dana says, hey, man, I'll pay you this much. I'm like, fuck it. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awesome. and what do you guys think about uh, Bare Knuckle FC? Bring it back. No, I'm kidding. No, no. <laughs> Would you consider moving over there for the right amount of money or is it like out of the table? It's not smart, man. I mean, you know, you're getting older, you watch boxing. There's a lot of repetitive head concussions like football. I want to be able to, you know, pronounce my words at the end of my career. So <laughs> thankfully, these guys are protecting us with gloves and the right education. You want to be able to sustain that. You don't want to talk to someone like, oh, move. <laughs> I don't want to make fun of anybody, but that's what really happens. So you got to be smart, my opinion. Liam, yeah. would you be Torre Masvidal in bare knuckle fights? <laughs> <laughs> would you fight Masvidal? It's gonna, we want to fight either way, so it's on site on the same, so that's, that's what it is. We're going to fight on a straight or an octagon, so we're never seeing it's going to be a fight. Thank cool. you. All right. Thank you, everybody. Make some noise as these great fights. Thank you, Stockholm, Sweden. We'll be back in a few minutes with the weigh-ins.